What's up everybody? This is Super Sentai Alex here and I'm going to do another Let's Play. Uh, for the first time we're going to be doing a uh, full JRPG on our channel. This is going to be a pretty long one and I'm probably going to invest quite a bit of time in this. Uh, but the game of choice is Pierce Solar and the Great Architects. This is the version I got in about 2012. I got this one uh, for the Sega Genesis, which is the initial platform they released on. Uh, it was released in 2010 by the Watermelon Corporation, and this was the second line of prints that they did after the first one sold out. Um, I was extremely happy when I got this. came with what you see here, the box. Um, the game is obviously inside. Let me show you that. There's the game cartridge right there, and then over here we've got a, uh, a manual, which is basically just, you know, how to normal stuff, like how to, how to get started, how to play, blah blah blah. It also comes with a little bit of story on the first page, and it's a really wonderfully detailed little, little um, thing here. It's got full color pictures, a lot of gold ink was used in here. Um, you can see there's a part in here that has like really nice, really nicely done full color art. Um, really good job they did with this. Uh, it also came with a couple stickers and some other things like that. And I was really, really happy with this release. Um, played a good bit of it. I uh, never actually beat the game though. Uh, and I, I wanted, I've wanted to beat this game for a while. It's just sort of been sitting on my shelf, like, hey, play me, play me. Um, and you know, I've, I've been planning on getting to it. So here we go. I'm gonna finally get to it. Uh, but they did actually port the game to. Um, they ported it to the PlayStation to. Uh, I think they imported it to Android, they imported it to PC, and a couple other different platforms, so uh, now we have a HD remake of the game basically, uh, not too terribly long after it had come out, and I picked that up about two years ago, and, and it's been sitting in my Steam library, and they recently did the uh, strategy guide, this, this came out hmm, maybe a year ago, a year and a half ago, and I picked it up and have not used it. So I figured I might as well, you know, having all of this game content, might as well actually put it to some use. So I'm going to try to do like a 100% walkthrough of the game using the strategy guide. In case anybody ever gets stuck in the game, um, you could always, and you don't have the strategy guide, you could always, always come to my channel and watch me play. And this is a really, really nice strategy guide. It's got full color maps, and there's just a lot to it. Now I haven't actually read through it, so I'm looking forward to seeing what all they did put in here, but I'm pretty sure it'll give you a 100% playthrough if you follow the strategy guide. Um, really looking forward to that. Uh, Watermelon Corporation, I love you guys and everything that you've done. I know it's really only down to Fonzie. Uh, his name is Gwendale Gadel or something like that. He's a, he's a Frenchman. Uh, and he's the only one left in the company. Uh, Tulio Gonclaves, or Gonclaves something of that sort. He's a South American dude, actually um, left the company pretty recently. But they still have two games that they're about to come out with, um, and that is another one for the Sega Genesis, called currently called Project Y. I don't know what the actual title of the game is going to be, but the working title is Project Y. And that's going to be a beat-em-up game, sort of like Streets of Rage, sort of a dystopian future beat-em-up game. Looks really good. Looks like it's going to be a, an incredible game. And I invested in that game since day one. Uh, another game they're coming out with that I've also invested in is called Project N, which is its working title. That's going to be for the Super Nintendo. Uh, looks like a Secret of Evermore type game, but we really don't know much about it yet. They've also worked as a publishing company. Um, I think they published two third-party games uh, that were de developed by third-party developers. And those games are called Poppy Commando and... Uh, I actually don't remember the name of the other game, but it's both of those are for the Sega Genesis. Uh, if you're into new de newly developed games for Sega Genesis, I would definitely check out the Watermelon Co Corporation. And these guys just started out, uh, this was their first game, and they started out on a forum board just trying to make a uh, simple community uh, RPG. Um, and they had originally called it Tavern RPG. They worked on it for about 10 years, and the two guys, two main guys, Tulio and Fonzie, uh, ended up putting out this game, the Pure Solar and the Great Architects, and it's a fully fully blown uh, JRPG that uh, would have fit well in the library of, of the time. Uh, 
So 64 mega, megabyte cartridge, as you can see right here. It's a huge cartridge for those games, or for Sega Genesis. Usually they, they would go to about like 4 megabytes. Big games might have been 16. Uh, I think most of the, the RPGs would probably be somewhere around 8 on average for the time. Um, so yeah, this is a very detailed game. And uh, Fonzie actually did a little bit of coding that has never been done on the Sega Genesis before, where if you have your pure solar cartridge in your Genesis and you have a Sega CD attached, the game can recognize that. And they did sell a um, high-res soundtrack of the game on CD format. And if you put that high-res soundtrack in your Sega CD, then you can play the game with high-resolution music. Uh, not only that, but it also added a bunch of new sound effects to the game. Uh, which was very cool. I loved it. I played this game a decent bit, but I never ended up finishing it. So here we go. This is going to be my playthrough of Pure Solar and the Great Architects, and I hope you guys enjoy. Game on!